So let's talk about preventing migraines in the first place. What is a, when does preventive treatment become part of the treatment plan and do you cover it? Right. Well, I th and I think even before we talk about preventative medications, I think there's the lifestyle and the triggers. I mean, for many people, migraines are triggered and you can identify what the triggers are. And I think that's where you always have to start in this conversation before you throw the medications there. And then, and then when the medications are needed, I don't know if you know what, what I, I, I do the same thing. I say, have a diary, write down how many, how many migraine days, headache days you're having and uh, what kind of medicines you're using on what day and what kind of effect it had. Write down what kinds of foods you ate mm -hmm. so you can keep track of possible dietary triggers. Do an elimination diet to uh, try and figure out if you have any triggers that you didn't right. know about. Right, and, and then of course for women, menstrual migraines, hormones, and there's, a, and there's, weather. And, I, and you can, and weather, right. And I think for many people you can go a long way with these lifestyle. You know, that's, this has taken a turn I didn't expect. I mean, it's fascinating that the first choice, and I was, I was looking to get answers for drugs, you're talking about lifestyle. Mm -hmm. In other words, this is very, it sounds easy, but I bet it's not. Keep a diary, tricky. When are you gonna write everything down? Tricky. At the end of the day, you get somebody with a diary and you identify something that looks like a trigger, you eliminate the trigger, how successful is that? Well, it's, it's pretty successful if, if for myself personally. MSG is guaranteed trigger for me. Alcohol used to be a guaranteed trigger for me. And so you learn to avoid those things that uh, uh, you know are associated with a, a migraine. But you wouldn't know that unless you kept very careful records. Not everybody is capable of doing that, no. are they? Well, apps are making that a bit easier, I think. I don't think you can walk down this. I think you won't be surprised if you walk down the street. You would be surprised if there weren't a whole lot of people bumping into you as they're playing <laughs> with their mobile phone. I think that the advent of apps is helping us a lot, yes. helping us a lot with this because it's a kind of natural place that people end up um, with whatever the whatever they're doing. I think for some of the triggers, um, punishing people. I, I don't like. I, I think it's right to advise them to have regular sleep and regular meals and regular exercise and regular just regularity, but. You, you know, there'll be a, a, a significant group of people who do their very, very best, and it actually doesn't improve very much. And, and I don't want to, I think they shouldn't be punished because they can't fix it themselves. Yes. It just, I mean, I, I, I support what's being said. I'm, I'm once caught, don't, let's not throw it all back on the patient. They have yes. to fix themselves. So let's go there. They've got a biological problem. Let's go yes. there. I mean, I was surprised you could do this at all. And I'm delighted that it works. Mm -hmm. But there's going to be a core group for whom it doesn't. Right. right. Now, what do we do to prevent their migraines as best as possible and how do you cover that? So I think initially, as was discussed, we start with treating with over-the-counters, moving on to triptans and other when it's a stronger headache. Um, and then if the headache is more frequent, we would move to preventative treatment. And for example, I mentioned before the beta blockers, um, certain, certain antidepressants, not all of them. And that was a great point that it's not all the beta blockers either. Um, and the anticonvulsants. So a few of the, all, all those categories. Um, and we, yes, we cover them um, at my health plan. And I think most health plans cover them. Those are tried right. and true medications. Let me just go down a checklist. Mm. Let's, let's, we, blood pressure drugs. We alluded to these. Which drugs work? Are they the expensive drugs or the cheap drugs? So the class is beta, beta blockers. Okay. So things like a tenolol, always end in a propanolol. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was ended drugs. in the same thing. These are drugs. generic, always okay. generic, um, and, inexpensive. And candesartans were saying there are two placebo-controlled trials now. It's once a day dosing. It's simple. It's it's cheap as well. So it's okay. a it's a, it's a good medicine. An ARB. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Not all ARBs, but and interesting. Not just, all ARBs. Just I knew that was coming. Yeah, no, it's and, it's nuanced. It's good. And calcium channel blockers. Yep. Tried okay. and true, also tried and true. Any so specific calcium channel blockers or all calcium channel blockers? Well, the, la the last of the um, um, IHS, uh, IAN guidelines did point out that the evidence for the calcium channel blocker that was, that's been used for Rapamil is woeful um, at the very best. And so um, it's been moved into the uncertain category because it doesn't turn out to be as... If you look at the evidence, it uh, gets washed around the Let edges. me take a little tiny detour. Sure. I get... I was under the impression that a great many of the calcium channel blockers don't cross the blood-brain barrier. Um, if that's the case, how do they work? Well, the, I just, uh, I, the, only the only calcium channel blocker that actually 
has proven efficacy in migraine is a drug called flunarazine, which is not available in the US at any rate. Oh, and does a lot. <laughs> well and does get into the brain. Okay. All of the ones that are available in the US have actually uh, there's no evidence at all. The only evidence actually in verapamil is, is negative. And verapamil, as you say, is a PGP pumping uh, substrate, so it gets it gets pumped out. So there's a there's right. a discussion. Tried so, to stump him, you couldn't. I know. I didn't want to stump him. I wanted information. I got it. Isn't that great? <laughs> um, very quickly, the antidepressives. How do they work? Which ones? So generally, tricyclics would be the category. Amitriptyline was mentioned. Okay. Yeah. It's the most effective. And the anti-seizure drugs. Which ones? Why do they work? What are your favorites? Well, topiramate has the best evidence and is the most widely prescribed preventive for migraine in the United States. Um, there's evidence for valproate, divalprex, but offering that to, um, to women when the side effects are uh, weight gain, cognitive dysfunction, hair loss, and a chance of effect, uh, and the fetal abnormalities just doesn't sound like a good idea. I'll tell you, uh, valproic <laughs> acid is one of those drugs that's yeah. very old. Yeah, we has all an awful about. Yeah, we all learned yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah I know. It's very I mean, awful. <laughs> it was right. like, we know about this drug, yeah, yeah, exactly. and the next sentence was, don't go don't, there. Don't go there. <laughs> right. yeah. I mean, it's like an eighth line. Drug, yes, yes, right? yes. If all else fails. Right. Then there's Botox. What's going on with Botox right. out there? Botox, so uh, decent, good evidence, I think, for, for um, migraines that are refractory to some of the other uh, preventative care that we've mentioned already. Only yeah. for chronic migraine. Mm -hmm. Chronic migraine. Then we talked about topiramate, right? Mm -hmm. uh, anything else in terms of drugs that we would use for chronic, chronic therapy, uh, preventive therapy? Except I'm curious that. what you would say for, um, for women who are, if contraceptive pills might work for some women. Well, the oral, co the oral contraceptive can help um, when it's used back to back and you prevent, mm. uh, you prevent menstruation if you've got menstrual related headaches. So instead of taking a bleed, um, you back to back the pill and you avoid the menstrual mm -hmm. cycle. That can be, that can be helpful right. for some women, however, that, it makes yeah. things worse and for some, and for some it makes it better. It's a little bit of an unpredictable feast. Mm -hmm. So oral one of the issues that people with migraine have with using these preventas that we've talked about is that it's really trial and error. Yes. And people who have migraine will maybe for uh, topiramate, for example, you have to start on uh, go low and slow and uh, build up and you get up to 100 milligrams and you find that uh, you're losing too much weight, you're stupid, you can't add, you can't function mm. in your life. So you can't just stop it. You've got to back off very got slowly. It. And then you try another drug and the same thing over and over again. And people just really, are um, wary of that, they're wary of the side effects, it's very frustrating, and they feel like guinea pigs. 